So June 2024 is in the past now. And to be completely honest and transparent, it was not a great month, but it wasn't a bad month either. I'm going to break down my entire results for my portfolio, how my poor man's covered call strategy has held up against the traditional covered call strategy, and of course, how much cash flow I generated for the month of June 2024. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the Average Joe Investor channel. We're looking at my June 2024 results, and of course, I do share this information real time for members of the Average Joe Investor Patreon community. So if you're interested in learning more about that, learning more about the covered call strategy, check out the Average Joe Investor Patreon community. All right, let's go ahead and dive into the results here. So we're looking at the spreadsheet for June 2024. And before we actually dive into those results, I personally utilize a traditional covered call and cash secured put strategy, which is essentially like the a high frequency wheel strategy where I utilize covered calls, cash secured puts on a daily basis with two specific investments, IWM, the Russell 2000 ETF, and QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF. And then I also have the poor man's covered call strategy, which is similar to a traditional covered call strategy, but instead utilizes purchased call options known as leaps options that essentially synthetically recreate a long position in the underlying stock or ETF. And the two ETFs I use primarily are QQQ and IWM. So before we dive into these results, here. Let's take a look here at QQQ and IWM and what they did for the month of June. As you can see, QQQ was up 6% for the month and IWM was down 1.3%. So as you might be able to imagine, QQQ was a little bit difficult to manage this month and IWM was a lot less difficult. Let's take a look at the results. The reason why is the poor man's covered call and the covered call strategies do not fare as well in an upward market. And that's what you would explain here with a 6% rise in just 30 days for QQQ. And with IWM, when the market is flat or declining, that is a big win for us as income investors. So let's take a look here at the actual results. You'll notice here at the top, I've got my option premium gross, then I've also got my net assets change. What that does is factors in any potential capital gains or losses as a result of assignments of shares. Additionally, we've got the my goal for the month, which was $5,000. And if I wanted to hit 5,000, what the daily cash flow was that was needed, and then what my actual realized month to date average daily cash flow was. All right, first let's take a look at QQQ versus IWM. With QQQ, I run a poor man's covered call strategy with two specific options contracts every single day. And then I also, with IWM, run nine different contracts, at least for the month of June, 2024. Of those nine contracts, three of them were traditional covered calls, meaning I owned 100 shares or essentially 300 shares in this case of IWM and I wrote covered call contracts on those 300 shares and then I had an additional six different poor man's covered call contracts where I owned a leaps contract for IWM which recreates to an extent owning shares of IWM and so essentially a total here was 11 contracts that I wrote on a daily basis so for QQQ as you can see right here total net income here for the month from this investment was negative. That's right, and I'll get to that in a second. Negative $223.93. And with IWM, the total was $2,329.85. So let's go ahead and come up here and investigate further here. As you'll notice, if we look at the dates here, we've got 6364 all the way down to 628 down here. We had a very large net debit right here in on June the 4th right here where QQQ was negative. I had a net debit, meaning I had to pay to adjust my position, $956.70. And factoring the total daily net debit for this, this was actually the largest net debit, or this, excuse me, the second largest net debit in my entire seven months of running this contract, of running these strategies from December through June. Essentially, the market was up big for both IWM, but especially QQQ. And as a result, I had to adjust or roll my contract out uh, to the following day. And that cost me significantly to do that. And that ultimately kind of killed the month for QQQ specifically, although IWM, which is not correlated with QQQ, definitely offset some of those losses, actually all of them. I also had another net debit here on the 14th with June, right here for QQQ at 394.70. And then a few minor debits here for I do IWM right here on 621. Another one for IWM on 621, small one, and then right here on 624 with QQQ. And then what we can do is we can break down the different strategies. So the poor man's covered call, which is essentially covered calls, like I said, but with a different way of recreating ownership of the underlying stock or ETF. 
So for the performance covered call strategy for the month, including both IWM and QQQ, total net cash flow here was $1,214.62 whereas the traditional, which was only three contracts, was a total of $891.30. So if we look up here at the top, total net cash flow for the month was $2,243.94, which is far below my goal for the month and far and definitely lower than what I've had in previous months. You can see here now we're looking at May 2024, my net cash flow was $4,150.04. In April, it was $4,246.93. In March, it was $3,952.09. And in February, $6,111.52. So when you look back to June 2024 and you see $2,243.94, you think, well, that was not very good. But considering I had the large net debit early in the month, the month didn't turn out that bad at all. I was still net positive. And just as an FYI here, I also had two dividends that I received. Number one, this dividend right here, which was from owning shares of IWM, that was $168.66. And the second dividend was right here on the 20th at the end of the month for all of the cash I had in that portfolio. It was essentially a dividend from the cash account and Fidelity, a total of $138.02. Now you might be asking yourself, well, okay, 2000, three, four, 6,000, how much money do you have, Joe? How are you generating thousands of dollars every month in cash flow. Here's a look at the max cash flow account from my Fidelity account. And you can see I've got cash here, $31,973.81. We've looked at the total portfolio balance, 141,330 and 10 cents. Then you subtract out the cash because I wasn't using the cash, it was just generating interest here. We'll subtract out 31,973.81. Means I was only had invested $109,356.29 in the portfolio actively being used for these investments and generating thousands of dollars every month in cash flow. So as key takeaways here for the month of July, moving forward here, how I, you know, kind of act on what happened and learn from what happened in June 2024, the biggest takeaway I had here was what do I want to do to actively or, or do I want to change really how I react to and respond when the market does challenge my strike price, especially if it goes far and beyond. And what I've historically been doing over the past few months is when that happens, um, I want to I go ahead and I roll my contract out to the following day. Um, and I'm very rigid on that strategy. And as a result, if there's a large net debit, I do it anyways. But what has I been thinking through it and kind of looking at my historical results, my thought process has been, well, maybe I should be a little bit more flexible on how I manage those debits. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to roll and do so for a net debit if necessary, but I am reconsidering how I approach how many days I roll out or how I adjust the strike price so I can minimize as much as possible the amount of the debit that occurs on a daily basis, potentially when the market moves significantly. So more to come on that. The good news is when you run a poor man's covered call strategy, if the market is difficult to manage, right? When the market is up significantly and you're, you're constantly having issues with rolling for a net debit and having to pay money to adjust your positions because the market is moving up, that also means that your underlying shares, and in the case of a poor man's covered call, your actual leaps options are going up in value as well. And I found that my QQQ leaps option increased in value significantly in the month of June 2024. Also, as a sneak peek for my next video, I did end up here closing in July. I ended up closing my QQQ poor man's covered call strategy. And we'll go ahead and recap what that strategy looked like, how that strategy worked over the past month or two months as I worked through it. If you want to learn more about creating a strategy, Strategy for selling options in your own portfolio, learning about different income strategies, make sure to check out the Average Joe Investor Patreon community. There's a ton of value there, especially in the Discord chat. You can learn from the DIY investors, hundreds of them that actually actively sell options in their own portfolio right now. Tons of value there. Also, if you want to get one-on-one -on -one time with me, tons of value there as well. Make sure to check out the exclusive access and the VIP access as well. If you want to learn more, check out the link down in the description below. Make sure to leave your two cents down in the comments below. It's my goal to respond to as many comments as possible on the day I post a new video. That's all I got for you guys. Have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching.